this machine from Michel Makes again with another vlog. Lovely to see you again. Um, a very quick mention, thank you very much for all the comments that you've sent me. I am trying to work my way through you, through them. And you may sometimes notice that some are answered at the top and some are answered at the bottom and there's nothing answered in the middle, but I would do me work my way through. It just depends on where I come to when I, when I open it up. Uh, thank you very much for the comments about my thumbs. Currently slightly better. This one's been acting up this time normally it's this one uh one of you said is my, is my hand are my hands in uh, uh chemicals no they're just constantly dry i can they, they get very very dry and i think it's because i'm handling uh stuff all the time i'm not just kind of sitting there doing nothing i handle stuff that makes my hands dry uh i'm uh assembling I'm uh, when I'm using fabrics my hands get dry with the fabrics and uh, several of you mentioned certain creams Janice Natclaire mentioned Corona multi-purpose ointment another couple of ladies mentioned certain ointments that you get in America Corona you get in America as well um, and I shall I've got some on order I shall be using some of those creams I'll try anything but I do go around constantly I think I think I've done my hands about 10 times a day just to keep them um, to keep them as soft as possible not so much soft but to keep these two thumbs soften the skin on them um, and maybe don't use the uh, I don't I don't have my hands in chemicals all the time but I do often get my hands wet I'm often I ha I, I wash dishes I don't use dishwashers although I've got one I prefer a dish I prefer to hand wash I, you know, I scrub it out rather than putting everything in the dishwasher I often just wash the dishes so it's probably because I'm constantly my hands are constantly wet and dry wet and dry wet and dry and so on I will I'd, I'd like to thank you can I thank you all for all your lovely uh, messages can I thank you for subscribing can I thank you for even thinking that I'm funny sometimes <laughs> uh it's it's lovely to hear from you all anyway and it's i like i like uh to keep keep email. some of you i email some of you email me and i email back and it's it's nice to have this friendship with people and just to get to know them a bit more and there's quite a lot of you from america so that's rather nice to be able to communicate with you over there um anyway this vlog is not about anything to do with that this vlog is something i came across today i happened to be looking i think i was looking at a vlog i was just um i was looking for something i can't remember what i was looking for and i came across a mention of something and the mention of something was uh, a famous fashion designer of um a famous fashion designer of the 60s from the 60s and that was mary quant and I thought, oh, golly, Mary Quant. I really loved Mary Quant's clothes. She had some fantastic clothes. And the link that, it, that I was looking at was from the v Victorian Albert Museum. And the Victorian Albert Museum often has uh, clothes exhibitions on. And so I went and had a look at the, the museum. And, and the Victorian Albert has an exhibition on of Mary Quant's clothes. And it's on till... till uh, Sunday the 16th of February 2020 so if you are in London if you're visiting London if your husband will let you get away for a while it's probably worth going to have a look at the Victorian Albert Museum to see the clothes um, to see her displays it's, it says here from mini skirts and hot pants to vibrant tights and makeup discover how Mary Quant launched a fashion revolution on the British High Street with over 200 garments and accessories including unseen pieces from the designer's personal archive now i oh golly all those years ago i just had to have mary quant clothes my sister used to have to have them she used to have the same hairstyle as mary quant the twiggy hairstyle we we just loved uh, everything about mary quant before she came on the scene i used to doodle da daisies when i was at, at school i used to doodle doodle daisies and it's quite funny because <laughs> I later on in life became became a governor at the, at the high school that I taught at and then I became a, a, a vice chair of the governors and I used to have to attend all these meetings and I can't sit and do nothing in a meeting I have to be doing something so I doodle 
and I was sat beside the headmaster and I was doodling, started doodling. The meeting started about half six, quarter seven. There was tea. They served us tea and then I started, uh, after we'd had our tea and were chatting, then the meeting started. And from the start of the meeting right till the end, I think the meeting finished about half nine, quarter to ten, I was doodling all over the paper and uh, a couple of the governors said, can I just say, I find it amazing how you have doodled from start to finish and I'm fascinated by watching you. <laughs> and I said, I said, well, I just, I can't sit and do nothing. I'm afraid I have to doodle. So, um, and, and they were quite fascinated and they said, it's very therapeutic, isn't it? So yes, I find doodling so when I've got nothing to do, just doodling flowers and designs. And I start with a flower in a corner and then I build up and I do more flowers and build up all the way across. But I haven't done that for a long time because I haven't been in many meetings lately. Anyway, I used to do the daisy and of course, Mary Quant's uh, logo was the daisy. I'll put a picture up there to show you what it was like. It was the, the little black daisy and we all, you know, you wanted the makeup because it had the daisy on the box. You wanted the anything because it had a daisy on. And um, I remember when I was in my 30s, I think it was about 32, I did a course in fashion design and there were about six of us in the, in the, in the group and it was a two-year course where you uh, designed your own clothes. You learned how to make patterns. You designed all, all your own, own clothes and... Um, you design you learned how to do the finishes how to do the seams how to do all these different kinds of seams and you went from making uh all sorts of things lingerie from underwear right through to outdoor garments to rain max and things and uh, our lecturer decided to take us on a trip down to london for the weekend and we i mean it that's a um, it might be nothing in America to go from to go four or five hundred miles but for us to do that in england it's it's a big trip and so we went down to London and she had arranged for us to go to the Victorian Albert where we were going to be shown fashion some clothes some vintage clothes from a fashion era and she asked us which era we, which era we wanted to see and we asked for to see the 60s so when we went there she brought out clothes the lady came out she had the gloves you weren't allowed to touch them and she presented all these lovely clothes and you could ask there to lift it up so you could see what it was like inside in, on the inside and we saw Mary Quant clothes we saw Jean Muir clothes we saw Zandra Rhodes um, uh, and a few others I can't remember offhand who they were now but it was lovely we saw those clothes and uh, when we we then went out after the after we'd been to Victoria and Albert we then went um, looking in, in boutiques the fashion boutiques and we went to Zandra Rhodes boutique and our lecturer said now listen when you look at the clothes don't and you take them off the hanger you take them off the, the rail don't just look at the outside lift it up and look at the inside and see how they finish it so we did that and we were going oh yes french seams because we thought it'd be all badly finished inside but they were really perfectly good seams on the inside and uh, french seams really nice finishes you know not not a thread hanging and we which you would expect because some of these dresses were Zandra Rhodes dresses were about a thousand pounds and that was what in the 80s so that's quite an expensive price over you know in those days and then we uh, we went out for, to see a show that night and then we the next day we went to Harrods we went to Harrods and Liberties and when, when we were in Harrods <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't afford much you couldn't afford to buy much in Harrods in those days I don't know what it's like now because I haven't been to Harrods for for years and years and years but uh, what we did was you bought something small <laughs> and as I'm a penaholic I remember I bought this pen I think I bought a pen with Harrods on and then you asked the lady you should put it in a carrier bag that said Harrods so you could walk when you went back on the train you could show that you'd been to Harrods <laughs> And the same applied with uh, with uh, liberties. Uh, you'd you'd want you'd want a bag to show that you've been to liberties. Anyway, when I was in Harrods, we were all delegated an area to go and look at the, of clothes, and I was delegated children's fashion, girls, young girls' fashion, and I went up to the young girls. Uh, clothes department dress department or clothes department and I just basically was looking at the clothes the way they were the way they were finished and so on and this lady came up to with her daughter came in, into the department with her daughter 
And um, now I'm from the north of England where uh, post-war child, you look at something on the rail, you get something off on the rail and you say to your daughter, oh, that's nice, Carly, would you like to have that? Just a minute, I'll look at the price and you go, oh, no, you can't have that, it's too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> there's another one. Oh, she, oh, that's rather nice. Or she'll say, Mum, that's lovely. Can I have it? Just a minute, let me see the price. <gasps> oh, no, you can't have that. Carly, that's too expensive. Well, this lady was going around with her daughter and she's going, Oh, very posh. Oh, we'll have that, darling. That will suit you. Oh, we'll have that one, darling. And what about a handbag, darling? We'll have that. So I was then following, kind of, without her trying it, to let her catch to me looking at it. And I was looking at the clothes to see, you know, there was obviously there was the same design but in different sizes. And I was looking at the prices and I was thinking, there were about four or five hundred pounds for a dress. And I'm thinking, blimey heck, what, you know, what has she earned to be able to afford that? Uh, I was quite taken aback because of, wow, have you seen how much she's spending on that little girl? I wouldn't spend that. So um, we did that and then I think we all came back saying, have you seen the prices? And people were buying them. And then we went to Liberties and as you know, quite a lot of you will know that Liberties has fantastic fabric, but it is so expensive. You generally only buy a half a metre or at a push a metre. So um, we tended to go and look around, buy the smallest little piece of haberdashery or a piece of ribbon and ask them to put it in the carrier bag and take it home. So you got on the train with your Harriet and your Liberties bag, pretending that you'd been spending lots and lots of money <laughs> when really you hadn't. <laughs> anyway, I've digressed, as I always do. This Victoria and Albert Museum um, exhibition is for um, Mary Quant. Uh, it's £12, the tickets are £12, so if you get the opportunity to get there, do go. I'm sure you will enjoy looking at the clothes. But when I was looking on the website, uh, I, I, when I was looking on YouTube, um, but I came across on the Victoria and Albert site, which I will put a link down here, but it's really got, I haven't had a look at all of them yet, but there seems to be some really good videos to watch from the Victoria and Albert about fashion, about styles. So if you have time to spare, some of them are only five or six minutes long, some are a bit longer, it's probably well worth having a look at. But the one that I came across, and it's only been up for a week, I think it was, um, published on the 3rd of May this year. It's called Sew Your Own Mary Quant Style Mini Dress. And they actually, I'll put that there to let you see. Can you see that? Sew Your Own Mary Quant Style Mini Dress. And um, if I play press play, you might actually get to see which ones they are. I'm Lilia, I'm here in the V&A's creative studio and I'm going to show you how to make your own 1960s style mini dress inspired by the iconic fashion designer Mary Quant. Quant was famous for her era-defining fashions which shook up the British high street. Today we're going to make an A-line mini dress which sits just above the knee, a great 1960s look which still looks great today. There's two different collar options, a rounded and an angled collar. There's also two necklines, a keyhole and a zip front. There's two pocket options also, a rounded pocket and an angled pocket. You can also add sleeves um, and another option for the neckline is a necktie. Then there is an optional belt on the back of the dress and these can all be combined with the same main A-line dress shape which you can also shorten or lengthen to your desired height. The dress that I'm going to be making is the sleeveless version with a keyhole neck and rounded collar and rounded pockets. So now I've printed out my pattern. So it's, I think it's really good and I've downloaded the PDF myself. I'm not going to be wearing it as a mini skirt but I felt it would be quite nice as a top for to wear, um, to wear as a top with my, um, with, with a pair of trousers really so I've downloaded it they do they, it there's a link I'll put the link below to the actual website to the uh, YouTube web vlog and uh, it's downloadable PDF and in the form for getting it printed at uh, large format printing and it's in three episodes there's th basically oh, three three something or there's three three vlogs that, and she talks you right the way through making the actual garment. Uh, 
earlier on I was looking at a, a V&A um, vlog which I'll put down as well of a lady who was changing jumpers taking old jumpers and making them into something else she works at the Victorian Albert and she reckons that that's her normal she she changes them she revamps them I think it was through her that I started I first looked at was looking at how to change a jumper and I came across this um this this website this the V&A website where a girl was showing you how she changed a knitted jumper and made it into something else or changed the shape of it and wore it a different way and then it led me to this so I would say the V&A Museum vlog post or vlog page or vlogs is my vlog of the day because there's some really good vlogs to look at so um, look down there the link to the pattern the link to the vl vlogs and um, the link to the actual V&A site and I'm sure that if you have a bit of spare time which I don't always have but if you have spare time it's well worth having a look at it and seeing having a look at what they do at the V&A museum and if you get the chance get yourself off to the Mary Quant exhibition well worth going to see so I'll stop there because I waffled on a bit too long and um, catch you next time bye